carbon forms the basis of all life on Earth. It's brought into the solid phase by plants through the process of photosynthesis. The availability of light and water, carbon dioxide and nutrients, all affect how productive an ecosystem can be. These are called environmental factors, but photosynthesis is only part of the cycle of carbon. We also need to look at how carbon is returned to the atmosphere so that the balance is maintained. The most significant route for this is through decomposition. Organic matter falls to the ground when it dies, and then biological, physical and chemical processes take over, incorporating that organic matter into the soil. This loss of leaves, twigs and sometimes whole trees is going on almost constantly in tropical forests. But in the seasonal broadleaf forests of the temperate latitudes, it's concentrated in the autumn leaf fall. Leaf fall becomes litter on the forest floor and its nutrients are usually conserved through recycling. Ultimately, the organic matter becomes so decomposed that it becomes mineralized to CO2. And when that CO2 leaves the soil, we call that soil respiration. So you could consider the soil to be a single entity within the carbon cycle. So the carbon that started out in the atmosphere as CO2 returns to the atmosphere from the soil, and this completes the cycle. But it's not an instant process. The carbon can be stored in litter for quite some time, and even longer in the soil itself. The amount of carbon in a ecosystem is not only in the living biomass, but in the litter and in the soil organic matter too. And the amount is a balance between the rate of photosynthesis delivering carbon and the rate of decomposition liberating it again to the atmosphere. And what determines this balance is the environmental factors such as temperature, water availability, nutrient availability. If we take the example of a tropical rainforest, which is warm and moist and nutrients are available, then litter is broken down very quickly and you get a very small store. All the carbon is in the biomass. But if you take another example, such as the Arctic tundra, which is cold and wet, decomposition occurs much more slowly and a lot of carbon is stored within the soil. In saturated soils like peat and the sediment of seasonal wetlands, there's no room for air and no gaseous diffusion, so the oxygen is soon exhausted. Only oxygen-free decomposition can take place. The end product isn't carbon dioxide, but a different gas, methane. The methane is an incredibly powerful greenhouse gas. It's about 20 times more powerful than CO2 at trapping incoming long-wave radiation. So it's incredibly important that we understand how both these gases might respond to climate change. 